Hi, I'm Bryony Kennedy, the founder of Adorn Cosmetics, and today I'm going to show you how you can update your look for events, party, or just something a little bit more than the everyday makeup that you pop on for, I suppose, the weekend or work. So if you've been thinking, oh, I don't know if this look suits me anymore, you've been doing it for a long time, uh, but you're not really sure on what changes to make to your makeup routine, then hopefully this video will help you out. So first of all, um, what I want to say is that we are going to stay away from using any black, okay? So black, I find, is one of those products, uh, one of those colors rather that people use, um, they've done it for a long time, especially in the form of an eyeliner. So I don't have anything against black, but I do think that as you reach certain age, there may be a time where black becomes a little bit harsh. So if you're putting black under your eyes, um, especially, I think that's a, a massive no-no. It tends to make your eyes look really small, which is not what you're trying to achieve. Uh, when you're lining your eyes, you're trying to to create the look of defined, big, open, beautiful eyes, not small eyes. So I think that that's probably one of the big tips I can give you if you take away anything from today is let's try your makeup without any black eyeliner. Okay, so first of all, I am going to prepare my skin. Okay, so it is very much about what goes underneath your makeup um, that is going to make your makeup look its best, stay its best, and obviously give you that really nice healthy glow. So as much as you want good quality products um, in respects to your color cosmetics, it is very much about what you put underneath your makeup as to how long it's going to last and what it will look like. So you really need to determine what sort of skin type you have, how uh, products last on you throughout the day, and then that will help you determine what to put underneath. So just really quickly also before I prep my skin um, is I am going to clean up underneath my eye. So it doesn't matter whether you've cleansed the night before. I do find that uh, no matter what you've done, there is always some remnants, nice, remnants of uh, mascara or eyeliner that is left over. Now, if you don't clean up under your eye, all of that black makeup there when you start putting on your concealer or your foundation, it is going to smudge down here and it's going to make your under eye circles look even darker than they may already be. So if that's another tip to take away, please make sure that you do clean up underneath your eyes. You'll be surprised how much makeup is sitting there. And you can just do that with a cotton tip like I just did with a bit of rose hip oil, um, maybe a little bit of moisturizer even will get that off. So you don't even have to go to the full length of cleansing your face. So to get started for me today because I am going to go out uh, later and I want my makeup to last a really long time I am going to use the hydrating primer which is our day moisturizing primer and I'm going to mix that with our antioxidant oil so that's a super popular oil you can mix our day moisturizer primer with a rosehip oil which we also have in the Adorn range um, or any other oil that you're comfortable with but for me I like the antioxidant oil because that is a product that helps fight free radical damage which is the oxidization uh, process and it just helps really give a nice look you can see a really nice dewiness to the skin so that when I put my loose minerals on today which is going to be my choice of uh, makeup because I do want that sweat and water resistant properties um, this putting an oil with the moisturizer is going to turn that loose into a liquid so it will make it look a little bit more dewy than just putting on the loose now if you are living in a warm climate or you have an oily skin type I wouldn't mix it with an oil I would just stick with the primer day moisturizer that will be enough um, so I would just then put your minerals straight on but for people who are obviously in um, a climate that maybe is a little bit colder dry or your skin's more dehydrated then I would recommend mixing uh, your products with an oil okay so then the next step for me is I'm going to pop on my loose minerals now the color that I've picked is the light medium okay so I can use light medium or medium olive if I want to look a little bit uh, darker I suppose um, but today I'm going to use the light to medium loose minerals 
Now for me, I take all of the uh, sifter off. I find it easier to work with it like this. I've got the Adorn Kabuki brush, which is always a sellout product, as you know, and I'm going to pop on about this much at a time, okay? So you use the lid of your foundation to press that into the brush now so there's no tapping okay and I'm just going to get this nice and evenly onto my face okay so I'm just going to pop it on this side so you can see the difference straight away and what I love about this loose mineral is that it has the 20 plus sun protection so I don't need to use an additional sunscreen. Okay, so the sunscreen in the loose minerals is from zinc and titanium dioxide. That's uh, sunscreen in its purest form. It's a, it's a block, a physical block, which is great. It's not a chemical sunscreen. Okay, so I've just popped a little bit on this side of my face, okay? Now, for those of you that do have a really dehydrated skin, you may want to go using the uh, hydrating cream stick, that's fine. But for me, look, I do have a dehydrated skin, but I find that this is completely fine once I have put an oil underneath because we don't use fillers like talc or bismuth or rice powder or anything that's a little bit more drying on the skin in our foundations okay so you can just see it's just evened out my skin um, in respects to this side okay and then i'm going to finish off with this side now i'm just placing the product on i'm not really buffing it okay i'm very gently just using a rubbing motion so remember, this is a look that we're doing for those of you that are wanting to update your party look, your going out look, your evening look, okay? And whilst I'm talking and explaining the steps, it will take a little bit longer for me to show you than it would be for you to do it at home. Um, I like to put a little bit of the foundation on my deck, my deck, my neck and my decolletage, and then uh, that just gives a nice even look because we can have a bit of sun damage on that area. So basically, it just helps even out that area. Now, you might have to put quite a bit on your decolletage because you might have a lot of sun damage there. So do that because it's going to make you look a little bit younger and more youthful if that's uh, nice and even. And on top of that, it's going to help protect the skin as well, especially if you're going to a function that's a barbecue or something that's out in the open okay because you're going to get a lot of sun hitting that area okay so that's the foundation done uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do my eyebrows because I use a brow dust and for me using a brow dust means I may get a little bit of fallout here so I'm going to do my concealer last to hide these beauties that are under my eyes so I'm going to brush them first with the brush that's in the seven piece brush kit of Adorns. Uh, and then I'm going to pop on the Peggy Medium Brow Dust. Okay, just to help define the ends more so of my brows. Okay, simply because I want a little bit more volume there. Okay, I'm using the angle brush and I'm using the short end first and dragging the long end after it okay so i'm just popping a little bit here now if you want some more advice on how to shape and define your eyebrows there is a tutorial on the website for this okay so just jump over onto our tutorial page and i'll actually show you on that how to measure up your eyebrow and where to place the brow dust okay so I won't go too much into that today, but you can see how already that's just given a really nice defined look without much effort. Again, the water uh, resistant properties of the loose minerals makes this a really popular favorite with people as opposed to using a pencil. Um, and obviously being water resistant and sweat resistant, you're not going to lose an eyebrow throughout the day. So no one wants that, do they? Okay, so I'm just defining this one. Okay, and then I like to, once I've defined them, I mean, that just is a small little thing to do, but maximum impact. So then I like to just go back with the brush just to comb through the brow dust so it looks nice and uh, nice and natural. Then what I'll do is grab a brush and just clean up any fallout that might have occurred. Okay, 
because we do not want any of the brown dust there mixing in with the concealer giving you even worse looking under eye circles than you may have to start with so for me now what I will do is pop on the concealer okay and the concealer I'm going to use is the peachy sleep concealer again another really popular product in the adorn range now this is an application that you would do yourself. So I'm not going to use brushes because I do prefer to use a finger under the eye. Um, I find that I can warm up the product. I can dab it on really gently where brushes can tend to be obviously a little bit more harsh and you're sweeping the skin. So for me, I just grab my ring finger. I pop it in like this. Obviously, I've got clean fingers. And then I just rub it onto the other ring finger. So I'm all about just trying to do things with the least amount of products as possible. Place it in the eye, in the corner of the eye like this, because we're all really dark in there. Now, if you have particularly veiny eyelids as well, um, it may be a good option to also pop this on top of your eyelids, okay? Because it just helps uh, combat any sort of blue or red veins. So the peachy sleep has a like an apricot or a peachy undertone, which helps combat blue and black. So that's why this is a really popular favorite for underneath the eyes. Now I'm just dabbing it on like an eye cream and you can see that that's already lifted uh, those dark circles that I had underneath my eyes. So with concealer, don't go putting too much on because it can uh, invariably make that area look worse if you put too much on. So concealing under the eyes is a very fine line between hiding or concealing what you've got and making it look worse so do not put too much on you're not going to totally eliminate that just soften it okay because otherwise you're just going to make yourself look older and more aged because concealer will gravitate to areas you don't want it to if you put too much on okay now if you have puffy eyes um you know or really a lot of skin um or you are using a, a, a really dark foundation color then the peachy sleep may not be suitable for you because light things make areas look bigger so you would preferably go with a concealer that matches your uh, foundation uh, color okay so the peachy sleeps better for people who've got the flat area here but just dark circles and the lighter skin types okay otherwise it will make your area look a bit gray if you're darker and you're trying to use this color all right so the next thing I'm going to do now is I am going to contour my face really quickly now you could do this with a bronzer um, I'm going to do it with a darker foundation today um, a lot of customers have two foundation colors one for summer one for winter obviously because you're getting a little bit darker so if you've got the two foundation colors this is a really good tip for you that you could use your darker color as a contour without um, much effort and blending ability so if you're a bit of a novice and you're not sure how to contour your face or give some really nice structure to the face rather than using a bronzer which is completely fine use a bronzer normally I do use a bronzer using a slightly darker foundation color will give you the same result but it's a little bit easier to blend so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular product which I'm now using the olive color so the olive in the loose mineral foundation I'm going to apply that in a three okay or two C's so a lot of what I teach is in C's okay so you're basically going to pop this around here okay so it's all along the hairline and underneath the cheekbones and then from this part of your ear I'm going to then pop it around there okay so it's two big C's or a three whichever way you need to remember that okay and you can just see on this side of my face now I've got a little bit more of that contour um, and what that does is makes this area darker so it makes your cheekbones look bigger okay and popping it along the jawline and down the neck if you make your neck just that slight bit darker especially the jawline here if you've got a little bit of extra skin or a chin you're not maybe so proud of making the neck area a little bit darker darker things look smaller so it's just going to give you more shape okay so it just helps make this area look smaller all right so I'm going to contour the other side now, if you've got really blonde hair, uh, this contouring method with the darker foundation color is probably a better option than bronzer, uh, just because you wouldn't want the bronzer getting in your hair and it looking orange, okay? So 
darker hair it's a lot easier to do a contour without much effort because you can just push it into your hairline um, for the blonde girls uh, you know it's probably better to pick a really light color or just be very careful that you don't get that into your hair okay so just a very quick contour now the reason we contour is to reshape the face um, I like contouring my face simply because I find that when you put foundation on which obviously uh, hides all the things you don't like about your skin it gives the skin a really fresh look but foundation can also make you look one-dimensional which is not natural looking so for me using a quick contour method like what I've shown you just helps the skin look a little bit more uh, I suppose it's broken up and it looks more natural because you're not having one flat look to the face okay so for me that's why I do it um, but the added bonus is obviously it makes the cheekbones and it gives some structure to the face Okay, so now if you are using a foundation that you've been using for a long, 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 long time um, and you're not sure about changing foundations, then head over to our colour matching because we can actually help you with colours there. Um, and we do have the foundation sampler boxes so you can decide whether the loose liquid or the cream is going to be the best option for your skin type. Okay, so um, maybe move away from some of those colour stay products. They can dry the skin out and obviously as we get a bit older, um, that's not what we want. We want really nice dewy looking skin but yes we want a makeup that's going to stay on as well we don't want to be touching up during the day so again this is a really good tutorial for those of you that are scared about making some changes and not sure how to update your look um, these are simple techniques that you can very easily do so the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to start on my eyes before I finish off with my cheek color okay again in case I get a little bit of fallout which I hope I won't but if I do then it'll be easier just to to dust it away um, you could actually do your concealer after your eye makeup as well if you're a real novice and you you make a bit of a mess uh, do your eye makeup first then clean any fallout away then do the concealer okay but being that I've got a little bit of experience I'm pretty good at not getting any uh, fallout on my under eyes with this technique so Moving away from the black, like I said, because that makes us look a little bit older, the eyes look uh, smaller, and it can look quite harsh. I'm going to use the Chubby Stick in our Smoky Quartz, okay? What I love about this product is you can use it as an eyeliner or you can use it as an eyeshadow. Now, I'm going to show you a real simple way of defining your eyes. It'll give a little bit of a smoky look to the eyes, uh, but it's not going to be as messy or as full-on as a smoky eye look. Now, I'm not too sure and I'm not too confident that most people one can even do a smoky eye um, or will even suit it okay so if you look at yourself in the mirror and you can't see much of your eyelid let alone this area so you've got a minimal space probably eyeshadow maybe even any eye look other than mascara maybe it's just not going to suit you because there's no eye area to work with and it's going to make that area look smaller so for you let's just focus on your cheeks and your skin and a good lip color just because i'm showing you how to do this look doesn't mean that you need to wear eyeshadow so that's one thing you need to look at yourself and say can you see much of my eye can you even see your eyelashes? So if you can't, then don't worry about doing any eye makeup. Just put a lick of mascara on and you'd probably need waterproof. Um, and just focus on your cheeks, your skin and your lips. That's it, okay? We can't all be doing everything. So just know your face. That's the only thing you need to focus on. Now, for those of you that can wear a bit of eye makeup or you want to, this is a really quick way of showing you how to do what I think is a classic smoky eye that most people can wear okay so the chubby all I've done again is a C I've just put it in the crease of my eye and I have just popped it back that way okay so I've just done a C now I've focused it mainly on the crease of the eye there okay and look it looks messy there's no you know it's going to look messy along the way so the other side I'm going to do the same so you don't need to, it doesn't look perfect. I find a lot of tutorials show the end result and you see it looking so perfect that when you're trying to do it yourself, you think, oh God, I can't even get this right. And you end up just giving up, but it doesn't look perfect as you're going along on yourself, okay? So just putting it in the crease, as I said. Now don't place it 
to the edge of your eye here. Don't place the product any lower than that because it's going to drag your eyes down and give you a puppy dog look. We want to lift the eyes up. So, you know, even if you have to do a dot as a starting point like that and then work in there, then that just gives you a good uh, indicator of where not to go below, okay? I have a very annoying hair on my eye. Sorry about that. Okay, so... Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab out of the Adorn 7-piece brush kit, which looks like this, okay, and with that in it, um, I'm going to grab out the dome brush. So the dome brush is the one that goes like this, and it's also rounded, and it's a really good blending brush for this. So the Chubby, you can wear completely on its own doing what I've done now, okay, and now I'm going to blend this. So it looks seamless, it looks natural, like already with just a little bit of a rub, it looks good enough like that, really. Um, the beauty with the Chubby Pencil is if you're not very good at blending eyeshadows, then this is a really good product to use because you're not going to get any of the fallout. Um, if you've got an oily, oily eyelid, rather, you might find, though, that using just the Chubby Pencil on its own may not stay on the eye as long, okay, because you're using... A creamy product okay so creamy products are always really good for people with dry skin any oily skin can use it but it just means you're gonna to have to set it down okay so the, the general rule of thumb is anything that's a loose is going to last a lot longer than a cream based product will okay so if you prefer cream because they're easier to put on then you might just need to then dust a little bit of setting powder or dust a little bit of your foundation over the top to lock it down okay so the other side, I am now going to pop, or blend rather, with my dome brush. Now, I didn't put a lot on because you can always add more. It's hard to sort of take it away. So you're best off looking at yourself and thinking, oh, I want a bit more than that, and then adding it, then trying to wipe it away. Okay, so I'm going to just very gently now blend up onto my eye socket bone. So you noticed when I put the chubby pencil on, I didn't place it on my eye socket. I placed it in the middle here or in the crease because then I can blend it up. If you place it here, you're going to be blending it up into your eyebrow. And that's where I get women saying I end up looking like I've been punched in the face. It's just because you're putting the product too far and then there's nowhere to blend it. So always put your product where you want it and then you blend it to where you want it to finish okay so that's a little tip there and I'm just gently blending any noticeable lines between having no makeup and makeup you don't want to see you know a, a, a structured line you want to blend away that now you might find having a tissue handy or even if you have to just the back of your hand get off any extra and then come back and with it as clean brush as you can blend away any of that definitive line okay so there you there you have what I would call a really classic smoky eye okay and one that anybody can do now for me I'm going to take that up one more notch and for me it just creates a little bit more intensity when you pop a loose eyeshadow over the top of a cream eyeshadow or a chubby in the instance that I've used today so I'm going to now grab the topaz in the adorn eyeshadow range it's a matte eyeshadow and it's got a little bit of a taupe color to it and it's a really soft taupey brown so it suits most people again and i find the topaz is a color that you know it's a really good staple to have and again by putting over a loose mineral on top of the cream it's not only intensifying it, but it's locking that cream down as well, okay? Or the chubby that I've used. So again, I'm just going to place it over the top of that blended chubby, and then I'm going to grab a totally clean brush to blend it. Okay, so again, I'm only putting a tiny bit on, and I am placing it on. You noticed I'm not, I'm not rubbing it on, I'm not doing any of this business, I'm placing it on, because I want it to be fairly intense okay so again you know people tend to try and do this look with blacks black ends up looking gray once you've stretched it so it's really uh, a, a color 
or a shade rather that I, I find that as you get older it's more difficult to pull off so I think just stick away from blacks if you can all right you get the same impact but it's much softer if you stick with a really dark brown so now I'm going to just grab uh, a second eyeshadow color before I finish blending the final look and the color that I'm going to use for this is unity okay so it's got no it's not it's coral pearl or you could use unity um so i'm going to pop that on the ball of my eye here and the coral pearl i like because it's got a really nice um i suppose like a gold but it's not too gold which can look aging so it's a nice pop of color and i'm just putting it on the ball of my eye here okay all right, so I'm not blending it into the corner. You can, but I just like to keep most of the color to the center of my eye like this. Okay. Okay, that's it. And then what I'm going to do now is again, go back, grab a clean brush. The clean brush that I like to use is the one that's the angle dome brush. And this is going to clean away any of the edging of my eyeshadow so putting that second color here has already automatically blended this part of the eyeshadow so that's a little trick that i always use so i don't have to be forever blending there i just use a second color to overlap that dark color and then that automatically blends it for me and then all i've got to now do is focus on blending this top eyeshadow I'm sorry the top eyeshadow all chubby away okay so happy with that now um, if you wanted to you could come back and then put a bit of eyeliner on if you wanted to so I'm going to just put a little bit of the chubby eyeliner in the corner of my eyes I don't tend to worry too much about going the whole way as I find that to get that really nice open eye look you want to create height on the edges of your eyes so if you're not good at eyeliner this is a really good technique to use by just putting it in this outer third so it's from the corner to the edge of your iris here okay and then to create even further height to my eyes I'm going to put it underneath so again it's a C okay it's to the iris on either side so you can see that this eye now looks bigger than that eye does okay so you just putting it to the edge of the iris again it's a C okay now if you find that it looks a little bit harsh you've put too much on just grab one of your, your brushes and just gently blend it away a little bit that's all you need to do okay I don't like putting eyeliner the whole way because it tends to make it look smaller and your eyes look a lot more harsh okay so now before I move on to my cheeks I'm going to put put on some lash primer I hate doing mascara in these tutorials it's very difficult to do so bear with me let's hope I don't poke myself in the eye okay so the lash primer is made out of a clay okay and what that does is it coats the lashes in length and thickness so that when you put your mascara on it's going to make your eyelashes look longer and thicker okay which is what we all want so I just put the lash primer on usually I curl my lashes first to be honest um, but in the tutorial I'll skip that part today and then what I do is I put the mascara on now again if you've got small eyes you've got hooded eyes or mascara doesn't stay put for you use the waterproof mascara okay because then that's not going to be warmed up on your skin during the day and smudge so if you do not have hooded eyes or extra skin on your eyes, then use our Hello Lashes Mascara. And you can use the black or the dark brown. I prefer the dark brown on an everyday basis, and that's what I'm using today. But feel free if you want to use the black. My only suggestion is, is if you don't have a lot of lashes or your eyelashes are really short and stumpy I would suggest going with the dark brown okay because again the black is going to emphasize the fact that your eyelashes are small and stumpy so if you've got okay lashes like I'm a bit older so they are going on the shorter side of things but they're not bad so I could probably wear either but if you've got really short or you've got a lot of them then maybe they're missing 
go with a dark brown, it's going to be much more natural looking and it's not going to draw attention to the fact that you are missing some lashes. So if you're blonde, redhead, I'd also probably go with a dark brown as well. Now I'm doing two coats and you notice I'm focusing on the outer lashes. I'm not doing it so much on the inner. I'm only doing one coat on the inner lashes. If you just keep loading up your lashes and focusing on all of them, you're going to get closer set eyes and this starfish look which is you know where all those eyelashes are just clogged together so two coats on the outer lashes and then just a little bit on the inner and then what I do to finish it off I wait till my eyelashes dry a little bit and then I get a bit and I face the brush like this so like I'm going to poke myself in the eye and I just focus on tickling the outer lashes so I'm not loading up my lashes with more mascara I'm just putting it on the ends to give extra length so you can see how that one now has more length than this one, okay? So it's just tickling the edge of those lashes because if you keep loading up your lashes with lots and lots of mascara because you're trying to create length, what you're actually doing is you're making them heavy and they're going to actually fall down. Like they're going to fall down. Like it's, it's just going to be too heavy. So get your two coats on and then... Your third step is to just tickle the edges of these lashes to get more mascara on the ends, but not at the base. So you can see that's made a good good difference just by popping it on the edges there. Okay, so there's another little tip. Um, now, moving on to the eye, sorry, the eyes, um, we're going to move on to the cheeks. So for me, I am now going to uh, use a... A colour that I think, because we've gone a bit heavier on the eyes, I try not to go too bright or too uh, intense on the cheeks and the lips. That's just me. I just think it's a bit much. If you want to avoid looking like a clown, it's about just trying to pick one feature and make that your standout. So if you're going to make your eyes your standout, then it's about making the cheeks look healthy. So I'm using the Coral Radiance because the Coral Radiance in the Loose Mineral is a really soft pop of color okay so it's not too intense um but it's it's not as say natural as our winter blush now for me i always put the a blush on the edge of the brow middle of the nose as a starting point and then i buff back okay because i don't want to drag my face down which is what can happen as we get older our faces look a bit more narrow so if you haven't been able to master uh, blush as you've gotten older or you're still doing this business that we all sort of did in the 90s and the 80s, the best thing to do to stop dragging your face down is to just focus on this part of the face and buffing it back. Okay, so, you know, buff it back into the hairline and then it's not going to look so harsh. Now, if you put on too much or you think wow I haven't blended it properly come back to your kabuki brush it's the best brush for finishing off your makeup so for me because there's still the remnants of foundation on it I just gently sweep over my blush and it just brings everything together seamlessly like I've been you know spending hours doing my cheeks so it's just a really good tool to finish off at the end with okay um now I'm going to use the trusty favorite product that I have is the Illuminizer. So the Loose Mineral Illuminizer. I love this product. It is so popular um, and it just gives the look of healthy skin. So if you feel your skin looks a bit uh, aged or dehydrated, this is your must have. Okay, so you just put the teeniest tiny amount on your blush brush. And again, it's another C. So it's the very last product that I put on my face. And it's just in the temples and you just pop it around like, oh, look at that. Okay, so it doesn't look glittery. It just gives that dewy look to the skin. Okay, so again, as we age, our skin becomes a little bit dull looking. We lose a bit of the color to it. So putting this product on at the end really gives that trick or the illusion that we've got healthy, dewy, awesome skin. Now, I also put the le what's left on the middle of my forehead. It's a beautiful eyeshadow. You can also make your lips look a little bit bigger with this, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but it's just a beautiful product to give highlights to the face. You could also put it on the cheek, uh, sorry, the 
collarbones as well. So that's the uh, mineral aluminizer. Now, if you've got a lot of lines, then you might just want to stick to this part of your face. Um, but you know, if you've just got you know your normal you know your normal sort of lines, it's it's totally fine. So I'm going to just put a little bit on the middle of my lips now. Why am I doing that? Simply because aluminizers make things look bigger. So it's just going to give the illusion that I've got more of a pout in the middle of my mouth. Okay, when I put my lipstick and lip gloss on, you can even put a little bit on the top of your cupid's bow here, which creates the illusion that your lip is turned up. Okay, so the look I'm going to do with my lips today is just an, a nude with a gloss over the top. I'm not a fan, to be honest, of nude um, lipsticks on more mature skin just because I think, again, we lose a lot of our colour. But because I've used a bit on my eyes, um, and whilst you can't see the blush is as, as tense as it is, I just think a nice nude lipstick with a gloss over the top is fine. But a nude on its own is not probably a color we can all pull off. So this is the nude lipstick. And I like this nude because it's not so opaque where some of them can be quite white looking. Um, but that's the nude. Now I wouldn't wear this by itself. I find look, I just look washed out. So 